So before we get started, I want to better explain uh, what and where Oglethorpe University is. So Oglethorpe University is a very, very tiny but really expensive liberal arts college in Brookhaven, Georgia. And in the podcast, uh, I mentioned that uh, Brookhaven is one of the wealthiest areas in inner city Atlanta. And I wasn't joking um, or exaggerating at all. Very, very wealthy people live there. And the university is normally quite expensive. Uh, however, they do offer a lot of scholarships, and they have a really high acceptance rate. So it's not terribly difficult to get in um, if you have good grades, which I had really good grades. Um, but there's a negative side to it being so small uh, and so attached to it's sort of like geographical location, the, the politics of Brookhaven as a whole, and that's everybody knows each other, and that's generational. So it isn't just the class you sort of go into. It's not like high school 2.0. Um, your reputation on the campus carries on for years even after you leave. When I became a student uh, there, I was inundated with stories and reputations of people who had graduated uh, by half a decade earlier. Uh, people still remembered them, referred to them by name, and whatever reputation they had, usually a really negative one. Uh, the other problem is the Brookhaven connection part of it is that it it is kind of a school that most of the elite people who live in the suburban neighborhood surrounding the school send their kids after high school. And uh, that means that those reputations and all of that intertwine uh, with the politics of Brookhaven. And Brookhaven incorporated itself as a city within a city specifically to isolate itself away from Fulton County, which is Atlanta proper, and to separate their schools from the public school system. It was very much a move to take the rich further away from the poor in contact with the poor. Uh, so people like me who come from Albany, Georgia, which is one of the poorest places in the country, are consummate outsiders. Um, and uh, it was an entirely new world for me. Uh, it's also a culture of haves and being caught up in the moment and uh, modern fashion and modern events. Um, uh, a lot of the people who go there have diplomatic ties to other countries. Uh, a lot of people from foreign countries go there and they tend to not be people from... They're people They are people from poor countries, but they tend to not be poor people from those countries. <laughs> Um, there's a set of luxury apartments that's just right next to the school built on top of um, a luxury shopping area and uh, rent that's absurd for the area like some of the most expensive places to live in Atlanta uh, that's not like in Midtown but still really expensive um, and like I lived at the Gables apartments because I was uh, taking care of two of the students which I had mentioned in the podcast and we had trash valet, uh, you know, a valet trash service. So you'd take your trash can out and someone would dispose of it for you. And it was mandatory that you paid a little tiny fee that was part of it uh, on top of the really, really expensive rent. I th always thought that was really absurd. That's a very bougie thing um, to have, but that's sort of a normal feature. And most of the foreign exchange students that were there lived in those apartments. They didn't live in the dorms. Uh, and it, I mentioned this also in the podcast. It's crazy that we pay so much money for it, but the dorms are terrible. Um, the worst quality dorms are as bad as some of the trailers I'd seen in Albany. <laughs> bad AC, uh, outdoor facing AC, easy to break into. Uh, there were a couple of break ins when I first got there. They were also covered up. Um, uh, and black mold giving people uh, long term illnesses uh, that were complained about and were hushed up and nothing was done. And because the people who run the school, of course, are all on the board and know everybody who runs the city, there's no one to really go to to enforce code um, to get any of this resolved. So students who have to live on campus live on campus in a really terrible environment. Um, it's actually quite sad. There are almost no security cameras either, which perplexes me. 
uh, not even in the student center, which is really fancy and ultra modern. There are domes for security cameras, but there's no DVR that I know of. And it's pretty much an open secret that none of that stuff works. Uh, internet's constantly down. Uh, it's not properly secured. When I got there, there was no Wi-Fi password, and you could literally connect to it a mile away. Not not the exaggeration, but actually connect to it a mile away. And you could see every device in the network. And it's not much better after I complained about it. I finally got them to incorporate a basic web key on an isolated non-guest version of it. And it's easy to break, and once you're in it, you can still see most of the devices connected to everything. Uh, it's really poor. I would not connect to it without a VPN any time I was there. And most of the time, I would just tether to my phone. It was more secure <laughs> and more reliable, frankly. Uh, getting assignments in on time was a nightmare because uh, getting things submitted online didn't work. And a constant problem academically and with my Title IX fights with the university has been I have no idea when or if they receive any of my emails and at least in gmail i would get a kickback and it would tell me that there was a block uh, but the internal school email using office 365 would not tell me and i'm pretty sure there are assignments that professors have never received from me uh, <laughs> i know for a fact an entire semester's worth was not received from me and i had to duct tape literally duct tape all of my work to his office door was the only, and then I took a picture of it as proof that I had finally turned it in. And uh, I'm not the only one who deals with those problems. Uh, but uh, that's the kind of weirdness that Oglethorpe is and the weirdness that Brookhaven is. Brookhaven is like a small town in a big city full of people who have more money than sense, but they don't invest it in anything that's functional. And there was a great article I, I read, and I'll, I'll dig it up and link it in the instruction. That, that, that's a common problem with Ivy League universities around the country. Um, uh, it's because people who generally go there are of means anything that's not provided by the university they'll just privately pay for so if the food is making you sick well who cares because can't you just go and eat out every night you know it's sort of the implication and uh, people who are there on scholarship and have to live in the dorms or are dependent like I became on the services at the university suffer uh they don't get enough caloric intake they eat food that makes them sick they live in dorms that you know makes them sick as well uh, and they don't have anywhere to go M even though it's mandatory to stay in the dorms um most of the uh uh students who go there and are are, are of means they uh, go home for the weekend or go home every night <laughs> you know they, they just they have a dorm room and they don't use it um, which is hilarious because as I be got into student life, I learned that this was another open secret is that people staying in the dorms are often not the students who were allocated those dorms. They policed this a little bit, but people would swap dorms. People would come in and visit and never leave um, because most the dorms are so crappy. If you had the opportunity to get an apartment somewhere else, even though you were not technically allowed to you they would just not stay in their actual dorm room <laughs> um but uh besides all of those problems uh the academic part of the university is amazing and that was something else i was not exaggerating about oglethorpe provides the best academic experience i have ever witnessed and i've sat in, in classes at uga gsu Emory, Kennesaw, um, you know, uh, Miami. Um, God, I was in uh, Tallahassee, went to, uh, around Florida State, a couple other places. Um, Oglethorpe's classes are just amazing. There's like, it's like half old school, but, you know, some of the professors at least incorporate modern technology on them, and they're incredibly knowledgeable in their fields, and the small classroom size and the amount of time and effort the professors put into their classes and talking to students is amazing like if you want to talk to a historian you can spend hours in office hours and even beyond connecting with a professor and giving you books and connecting you to his connections at harvard and yale and oxford and cambridge um it, it's it's incredibly difficult in today's job market to get into academia um, a lot of people will tell you it's a dead end 
sort of field, but Oglethorpe is one of the few places that if you do all the extracurriculars, really connect with your professors, do really well, make good grades, and put a lot of effort into it, you can have a future as a professor, as a professional academic, as a museum curator. And that's a very, very rare opportunity. And that's why I was there. I was there for that. And um, that's been robbed from me. I, I don't I don't really have hope that I can ever get that back now, even if I did win, uh, which is sad, because this is what I, I've always wanted to do my entire life. Um, I uh, uh, grew up in Albany, dirt poor, and I actually have a pull yourself up from your bootstraps kind of story because I took the computer skills I taught myself when I was a child, and I worked my way up to owning my own IT firm. Uh, but I lost all that money taking care of my mother and medical expenses and generally living life. So I don't really have a lot to show for it except for the experience of it. Uh, but uh, I escaped and came to Atlanta and I didn't want to do all of that. I actually hate doing IT work. And I'm sure there's a lot of my friends when I post this on Facebook who know me as the IT guy. They remember seeing my ads on WALB and uh, Fox 31. Neovox Computers in Largo Plaza on Dawson Road is your local source for computer sales and service. The certified technicians at Neovox Computers have a combined 25 years experience in desktop and laptop repair, home and business networking, and business IT solutions. Frustrated with your virus-infected computer? The professionals at Neovox can clean up your infected system fast and within your budget. When you have a computer repair need, call 337-2238. Neovox Computers, welcome to the 21st century. And I'm the Neovox guy. That was the name of my company. I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm the computer dude. And that's kind of what I'm known for. I'm known as being this IT hacker guy. I have a confession to make. I hated every second of it. <laughs> I like working with technology when it's my own projects. But I like using technology to learn other things. Like, um, as an example, as a project I did, I uh, made the Parthenon and Minecraft for a project. I... I, I, I've always wanted to sort of use technology in a, in a history preservation, um, teaching, uh, you know, sort of situation. I, I use technology to, to learn beyond the scope of the narrow w world that Albany is and escape the ignorance that sort of like holds in its grip. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly didn't pay for most of really kind of any of the books I read <laughs> uh, but uh, that's where I prefer to use my skills I guess I'm a thief of knowledge but uh, um, uh, a pirate in that sort of way um, but uh, instead of pirating pornography I pirated books uh, <laughs> textbooks, history books um, that sort of thing because uh, I usually couldn't afford it um, and uh I had a physical library of books, but, and that may be the most symbolic thing of all of this is, so I, I went to Oglethorpe to change my life and do the thing that I loved. And what I really loved was academia. What I really loved was learning and history and language and culture. And I did amass a physical library of books that were, was moderately large. And I, uh, um, had kept them with me through many, many moves and the one thing that I lost that I wish I can get back out of losing almost all of my property is I lost my library of books almost down to the last book. And I went to Oglethorpe to expand that library of knowledge. And instead, and in some ways, it was taken away from me. This, the priority of the people who run the university is not knowledge or enlightenment. It's uh, perpetuating privilege. 